be me. A decade ago. Be 18. Go to a dodgy theme park with a family that we saw passing through on the way to holidays. Get on toboggan ride. Little card with no seatbelt and a brake lever. Metal half tube held together in segments with rivets and etc. Go up and down four or five times. About to leave. Decide to go again. Rivet pops while I'm going past the segment. Metal tube curls up and cuts one fourth inch through my neck. I haven't realized it yet. Dad's running over while I'm getting off the ride. Wow, that was so crazy. <laughs> Pass out. In and out of consciousness. On hospital bed. Blackout. Become fully and completely aware and conscious. Still in a void. Not in a hospital. Can't feel, taste, see, or hear. A pure void. I am a disembodied consciousness. In a sea of endless nothingness. Feels so fucking good. Like, I'm meant to be here. And this is where I belong. The place feels... familiar. As I come to this realization, everything starts coming back to me. The universe. Our connection to... everything. I see everything. I feel everything everyone feels, all at once. I feel myself become one with everything and fading into blissful sleep. Boom. Wake up in hospital. Docs just stabilized me. Fuck load of stitches in my neck. Literally less than a millimeter from hitting primary artery. Immediately furious, and demand they send me back. Why the fuck did you bring me back? Fighting back. Sedated. Wake up later. No memory of fighting back. Was told what I said slash did. After waking up first time. No longer fear death. I look forward to that place now. Whatever it is. Be at home very early one morning. Only my brother and I are awake. Pitch black outside. Dogs are out. An idiotic water pointer and a fat beagle. Beagle starts baying. Pointer starts whimpering. I open the door for them. They don't move. Both looking at one section of the porch. Frozen. I step outside. Turn on the light. My brother thinks it's a burglar. Is carrying the fireplace poker. Possum hisses. Beagle bays again. Pointer hides behind me. Brother freaks out. Swings the poker. Hits me in the head. I go down. Possum hisses louder. Starts shitting everywhere. I'm shouting. My brother's shouting. Beagle passes out. Pointer tries to hide behind my prone body. Possum waddles back into the woods. Shit and blood are everywhere. Not even once. Be me. A few years back. Live near a huge cemetery. Like, I'm talking massive. At least two and a half acres of land. Being an edgy teenager, you go on a night walk through this big-ass cemetery. It's around one in the morning. Walking along a path that cuts down the middle of the cemetery and branches out into the other plots, leading to a mausoleum at the end of the field and is lined with bushes. Playing to a punk rock out loud on your phone and also using the phone as a flashlight. You didn't charge your phone in over a day. Get a notification that your phone's gonna die. Decide to ignore it, figuring that your phone will last. Dumbass.png. Sure enough, phone dies and flashlight goes bye-bye. Oh, fuck that PNG. You are now in the middle of a massive cemetery, in the darkness, and it's dead silent. The moon is out, but it's a cloudy night, so you're just barely able to make out the shapes around you. You're progressively getting more and more paranoid as you start hearing shit around you. Within seconds, you begin to start having a panic attack like the little bitch that you are, panting heavily and frantically turning in circles, mumbling and crying like an idiot. Suddenly, you hear something rustling around up in the trees above you. And, in your delirium, you swear that you saw a dark figure with a pair of glowing eyes standing right above you like a fucking sleep paralysis demon. In hindsight, the rustling was probably a goddamn squirrel or something, and you were just seeing shit. But, being in that delirious state from the fear and getting lightheaded from how you're breathing, you book it down the path towards the cemetery entrance. Whole time you're thinking a fucking demon or some shit is chasing you. You didn't stop running until you were almost going to pass out. But, luckily, you weren't far from your house. Needless to say, I never went anywhere near that fucking place at night ever again. Not spooky, I just can't get my head around it. Early mid-90s. Schools didn't have computers the way they do now. School only has 12 classrooms. Whole school only has about 6 PCs that get shared between the classrooms. They're on these big, heavy-as-fuck trolley things. One day, the teacher asked me to help her take the computer back to where they're stored. Go with her. 
The school is so worried about being burgled and someone taking the computers that they're kept in this big room with no windows that's situated in the middle of the building. I'm not kidding you, it's like a giant walk-in safe. Walls have to be two feet thick, solid concrete, and the door is just like a vault that you need two keys to open, and it has one of those spinny wheels on the inside that submarines and ships have. It's heavy duty shit. Door is heavy as all fuck, and even the teacher struggles to open and close it. Think about being trapped in the room all the time, and it makes me panic. Break up for six week holidays. Come back. Room is completely gone. The floor doesn't look any bigger as it should when you remove a ginormous room from it. Ask people about it. They don't know what I'm talking about. Ask teacher what happened to it. Gives me that Anon's off his meds again look. This has had me baffled for nearly 30 years. I can still picture it vividly, and I know for certain that it really existed. Weird experience I had a few years back. At work, unloading trucks. One guy in the truck putting boxes on rollers. Two of us unloading the rollers. My coworker, who I'll call C, and I look in the truck and see one wall of boxes left. Maybe 200. C asks for the time. It's 1.42. We unload at least 700 to 1,000 more boxes. What the fuck? C asks for the time again. It's 1.42. What the fuck? We look in the truck. Still, the same wall of boxes left. I just legitimately have no idea what happened that day. Here's mine. It's not too eventful or crazy, but it has bothered me for a long time. Be somewhere around 9 to 12. It's dark as fuck. Can't sleep. Tossing and turning in bed. Eventually, go to reading books. I believe a Geronimo Stilton. See two guys unloading a truck in roundabout. I think I see a gun. Wasn't sure. About an hour or so later. Bang. Screams like a bitch. Mom runs in. Anon, what happened? Mom, I heard a gun. A gun. Like a machine gun. Cue me crying like a coward for an hour, thinking a murder happened. I go out there find a discarded rifle casing in the dirt by the edge of the pond. My face went. Been ghost hunting several times and never saw shit. Stop in New Orleans with X and stay in the French Quarter. Number one, doing a ghost tour and standing outside one of the torture houses. While listening to the guy tell a story, I'm leaned against a street lamp on the ball of my right foot. The slides I'm wearing hits my heel like someone stepped on it. I'm in the very back though and no one was walking by. Number two, get drunk as fuck on Bourbon Street that night. Get to room in supposedly haunted home and yell at ghosts to reveal themselves. Pass out. Have sleep paralysis slash dream where I'm laying in bed and something is at the foot of the bed staring and laughing at me. Has a face like the mask in the movie, The Mask with Jim Carrey. Number three, next morning, walking to breakfast. One overhead restaurant sign is swinging violently. No wind and no other signs are moving. Check for shenanigans, and the sign is just hanging normally from a chain. Point it out to X. She thinks I'm dumb, but point out how no sign is moving, but that one. Watch for a few minutes, and it continues. New Orleans is haunted as fuck. B20, basically homeless. Aunt offers me to stay in the summer cottage that belongs to my family. Cool, no rent. Spend summer in the family cottage. 15 minute drive from the nearest town. The place has no electricity, but it does have a diesel generator that powers the place. However, it's loud as fuck. Organize and clean during the day. Sleep when it gets dark. Be completely alone. One day after being there for almost a week, hear disembodied talking around me. No biggie, maybe some group of people are walking nearby. At night, I turn on the generator for lighting and charging my shit. Inside the fucking cottage, I hear disembodied laughing, like mischievous children or that chipmunk effect laughing, and it sounds like it's close, sometimes in different tones and at random intervals, sometimes five cackles in a row, sometimes one randomly follows by hours of silence. I believed it was the generator making vibrations in the wood, at least I told myself that to ease the nerves. Around 10 p.m., turn off the generator, complete silence. I can hear the wind cracking through the windows. The laughing returns, but this time, it sounds like it's coming from outside. Decide to ignore it. Many weeks later, see Aunt, 
told her about the laughing in the generator. She tells me, Oh my god, Anon, you hear them too? Hear what? The gnomes. She tells me that almost everyone has heard them, and kids can see them, and the whole forest is infested with them. And Grandma said if you're good, you can hear them, but only if you are pure, that you can see them. But she calls them duendes. I've posted this before, but now that it's in my head again, I can't stop thinking about it. Be a group of teenagers drunk and rowdy in New York late at night. No one around besides us at a corner in an intersection. Mercedes pulls up at the light and stops while it's green. Confuses his shit out of us. Friend yells at car. Yo, what up? You want to party with the boys tonight? All windows roll down to reveal all well-dressed women in their 20 to 30s and some male model looking dude driving the car. No one is smiling. They're just looking at us. I say, Oh shit, maybe I should be the one parting with you in there. Girl and passenger with no emotion. Well, there is no room in here. You would have to get in elsewhere. Trunk pops open. What the fuck? We play along. I go to the back of the car. Okay, I'm definitely getting in right now. Make believe I hopped inside and slammed the trunk shut. Friend yells, Haha, he's in. Car peels the fuck out at full speed into the darkness, leaving me falling back into the street. Everyone is shook as fuck. No one knew what the fuck it meant. Forgot about it for years until my brother brought it up. Be me. Two weeks ago, out at the Deerleys with my friend. He says, Hey Anon, I'm gonna head on out. I'm bummed because it's only 5 p.m. and we were supposed to spend the rest of the night out there. 10 4, dude. Catch you later. He leaves the blind and heads off through the woods towards the trucks. About 40 minutes later, I hear a tapping on the door. Look at the slide on the door. It's my buddy. He doesn't say shit, so I just let him in. I thought you were heading out, man. Knew you weren't gonna quit on me. Notice he doesn't have his rifle. Where's your gun, dude? Oh, left it at the truck. Oh well. Shit, you may as well have just gone home. He just smiles and sits there. Doesn't say a word except for the occasional grunt of acknowledgement and the hmm of interest. It weirds me out because he's normally a pretty social guy. Always talking about UFC shit or Mass Effect. I ask, you okay, bro? All he says is, don't feel good. That's all. About 5.30 a.m., he says, hey, Anon. I'm gonna head on out. Before I can even reply, he's gotten up and exited the blind, and I can hear him tropping through the woods. At the time, I thought, well, thanks for scaring off the deer, fuckwit. But now that I think about it, he wasn't walking towards the trucks. He was walking kind of off the way. About 7 a.m., decide, fuck it, I give up. Pack my shit and head to my truck. His truck is gone, so I think nothing of it. And the reason I'm bringing this all up is because I talked to him earlier today, and I was asking if he felt better, and he looked at me confused and said, What do you mean, Anon? You know, after you came back to the blind, you said you weren't feeling good. Figured that's why you weren't running your mouth about quatrain pussy. He looked at me like I grew a second head and said, Anon, dude, I didn't come back to the blind. I drove home. I got home at like eight and went the fuck to bed. So, yeah. Fresh one, boys. Just heard this from my mom. There's this janitor who works at my mom's office. She was absent this Monday and Tuesday, and came in only today. So, my mom asked her where she'd been for two days. The janitor has a younger brother who works for my country's equivalent of Homeland Security. The younger brother, let's say Jay, and his wife had gone to the beach last Saturday evening. It was late by the time they decided to go home, and they decided to take a shortcut from the beach to their home. As they were on the path, Jay experienced someone gripping his neck, almost strangling. He managed to get the grip off and they both reached home safely. Jay starts behaving crazy. It seems as if something is pushing him to one side, something pulling him at all times. Jay goes apeshit, shits in the living room and flings feces, urinates all over the house, punches his wife and kids. Jay's relatives, including the janitor and her son, get him into a taxi and take him to an hospital on Sunday night. The first hospital they go to, he punches the staff, but is cleared of having any drugs in his system, so he's clean. 
They send him off to a psych clinic. He has various scans taken and shit, and punches some doctors along the way. Imagine targe strength, plus law enforcement officer strength. Finally, on Tuesday morning, they take him to the local mosque and have him looked at. He sleeps after two days and wakes up completely normal. Asks what he's doing in the mosque. He makes a visit to my mom's office and is completely normal and polite by demeanor. He visibly shakes when recollecting the incident. My house is weird, but only for my girlfriends. Hello, X. First time ever coming to this board. Mainly because I wish I could believe in the paranormal, but I always find rational explanations to almost everything. However, I'm going to tell you about the things that I haven't found rational explanations for. My house is not old. It was built when I was already two years old. There is nothing buried underneath it because when they were building the foundations, they realized there was a layer of four feet of earth and then huge rocks that cover almost all the property. Before the house was built, this property was like a hangout spot for people around the neighborhood. So we made a few enemies when my mom brought the property and built the house. I say this to rule out any possibility of this house being haunted or any of that sort of things. However, the house has always made my girlfriends feel weird. I'll be writing some of these events so you guys can tell me what you think. Girlfriend number one, first event, said she woke up in the middle of the night and there was a long white sheet flowing from the ceiling all the way to the floor. She closed her eyes and tried to fall asleep but couldn't. She looked away and the sheet was gone and then she was able to fall asleep. Second event, she woke up to banging on the roof. Says it looked like someone was stomping on the roof and every step would make the entire house shake. This relationship lasted for six months. Those were the only things she told me about. Girlfriend number two, first event. She was combing her hair on the mirror when I walked up behind her. She said hi, but immediately looked past me and screamed. Said she saw gnarly feet coming out from my bed. Second event. We were laying in bed. She had her hand on my back and suddenly screamed. Said she felt another hand grab hers. Third event. It was late at night and I wasn't home yet. She was drawing with her back turned towards the window. Says she heard me knock on the window and told her let me in. She looked over and saw a dark figure with red eyes staring at her. I am so tired of them always having red eyes. At that very moment, I opened the front door and I heard her scream. She was terrified of me for a couple of minutes, thinking I was doing all of that. I wasn't. This relationship lasted for four years. And girlfriend number three, first event. She was having a dream about being asleep in the living room. In the dream, she could see herself from the outside. She saw a woman enter the house and walk right up to her. The woman knelt by her ear and screamed her name. She woke up because she thought someone was actually screaming her name at her. Second event, she went out back to get the clean laundry. It was like 7 p.m. Says that when she was getting the laundry out of the machine, she felt like someone was looking at her. She looked back and saw a large white sheet rising from the ground. The sheet was almost translucent and was near the perimeter of the fence. She started freaking out and calling me. When I got back there, I saw nothing. Third event, this has been happening for the past week. Girlfriend wakes up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. She only talks to me to ask to go to the bathroom. She goes to the bathroom, but never pees. Doesn't say anything else the entire time. Finally ask her what's up with that. She has no memory of it. She doesn't even remember going to the bathroom.